whomever is in the Queen of Swords energy here, you're good. You're solid. You're solid on this energy of whatever it is you're moving towards, whatever new opportunity that you're moving towards. And it feels like there's a sense of being sure of yourself sure of yourself in terms of what it is you are moving towards it's going to be balanced it's going to be harmonious it's going harmonious it's going to be reciprocal and that's because you're ensuring that it's going to be that way with this queen of swords energy Hello everyone, welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to Morning Coffee, your daily collective tarot reading. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Let's help get these messages out there to more and more people that may need them. And as always, I love hearing from you guys. So let me know down in the comments how this reading resonates for you, or maybe if it doesn't, I don't know. Let's see. But also keep in mind that it is a general reading and it's a timeless reading. Yeah, I used to date these readings, but I stopped doing that because all of these readings really are timeless, regardless as to whether when they are posted and when even you see them. You could watch it a year from now and it still may resonate with you. Yeah. Okay, uh, just a few announcements before we get started. Um, as always, you guys will be able to find uh, timestamps down below, both in the description box and in the pinned comment at the top of the comment section. But I just want to uh, talk through some things first, give some little announcements before we get started. So first things first, the first round of July monthly readings is coming out, is going to be posted today. So that's Aries through Cancer. Um, I have a, a few little slight little things to do just to finalize those and then they will be posted later on today so you will be able to see them yeah for your july predictions your july readings sage also we <laughs> we will be having happy hour tonight yes for those of you that are new happy hour is a live session that i tend to hold about once a week where um i get to connect with you guys and i will do some uh discounted single question readings normally a single question reading is thirty dollars but during happy hour there is a five dollar discount so a thirty uh, i'm sorry a single question reading is twenty five dollars during happy hour uh, the floor is officially open if you'd like to get in on that for tonight all of the information can be found in the description box below just send your payment to the link to my PayPal account, which is down in the description box, paypal.com slash divine conversations, $25. Make sure that you put your question in the notes section so that I have it and ready to go when we get started. Um, I'm looking to go live around 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so that would be 2 p.m. Pacific anywhere in between there, so around 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, so check that out. Uh, yeah, link for the information can be found in the description box below. Um, 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 Mercury is stationing direct today, guys. I am going to record a little bit of a video talking about that for my Patreoners, yeah, for the inner balance and the, of course, the full Monty package. There really hasn't been much going on this week that I really wanted to pay too much attention to on top of the fact that I've been working on the July monthly readings. So I'm, I'm kind of trying to pace myself and, and make sure I'm putting my energies in the appropriate places at the appropriate times. And this week there really hasn't been much going on, which makes a lot of sense. We did just come out of that full moon last week. So there's still a lot of energy swirling around, but today it looks like Mercury is stationing direct, you guys. So if you're over on Patreon, look out for... <clears throat> Uh, probably a short video just talking about that because there are some other aspects in terms of that that I do want to discuss with us. Yes? Okay, so, um, I believe that's it for now. So let's get going on today's collective reading, yeah? Uh, I'm going to be using the uh, Mystical Manga deck as our main tarot deck today, and then of course, we're going to be getting clarification, and that clarification is going to be coming from the after tarot. Yes? All right, guys. Let's get into this here and see what we have for the collective today. Hi, spirit. 
please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, romances, relationships, places, and circumstances in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, guys, let's give this five shuffles, yeah? One. For our morning coffee collective tarot reading, this is two. This is three. Four. five. All right, guys. So let's see what's going on for the collective today. What do we want to talk about in the, for the collective in this session? What do you want to discuss with the collective today? Please, Spirit. What would you like to discuss? A lot is coming out so far. What would you like to discuss with the collective? Spirit, it's interesting. There are so many cards just flying around all over the place. Um, and so many of them have actually flipped over. As you can see, I was doing that while my eyes were closed. I like doing that lately. It helps to take my mind off of, you know, well, what, what card is going to come out? And it just lets them flow. And as I was doing this, so many of the cards flipped over, but they actually didn't come out of the deck. And, it, and it's kind of flowing with what I'm seeing here because we have uh, four cards on the table so far. Only two of them have fallen face up. Uh, the first one that I saw that fell face up is the Nine of Swords. And then the other one that I saw, the other one that has fallen down face up is the Queen of Swords. Okay, so this is most likely a continuation of our discussion from, I want to say the last two days. Links to those videos can be found in the top right of your screen. Also in the description box and the pinned comment below, okay? Uh, yeah, so overall energy here is the Eight of Swords. And part of what I was, not the Eight of Swords, I'm sorry, the Eight of Cups. And part of what I was feeling here in terms of, you know, the fact that, I mean, it was only three cards, to be honest, that flipped over. It felt like more. But there were only three cards that flipped over and stayed in the deck. But in terms of those cards that kind of were trying to come out but just couldn't quite do it or maybe didn't quite want to, I don't know. There's some fear, there's some apprehension surrounding it. But then, of course... You do have this Nine of Swords here that is kind of speaking to the fear. I feel like we have two sides of the equation. Yep, look at that, okay. Uh, we could be talking about a relationship. This could be a love reading. Um, and what you could have been dealing with lately uh, in terms of the Queen of Swords energy that we've been talking about for the last two sessions or the last two days, however you wanna look at it, describe it, um, you could be walking away from a certain relationship, all right? Now, one side of the equation, whomever is in the Queen of Swords energy here, you're good, you're solid, because you have the Queen of Swords with the Four of Wands, the Ace of Pentacles, and the Six of Cups. And the one thing that I feel for you, whomever is here in this Queen of Swords energy, I feel like you're solid, like, you're solid on this energy of whatever it is you're moving towards, whatever new opportunity that you're moving towards. And it feels like, um, you know, you, okay, well, you have the four of wands, right? The four of wands, which is representing a sense of stability. Fours are a sense of stability. There also may be a level of inner union. I'm also hearing inner peace that's helping drive you or that's helping you thrive in this situation. You have the Ace of Pentacles, which is representative of a new opportunity, a new start. Uh, for some of you, I, I did just hear a new business. And then with the Six of Pentacles, it's interesting because the Six of Pentacles, is help, which is this one, it's helping me feel like, feel this energy of you just being solid in what it is you're moving towards. There's a sense of um, comfort, okay, 
uh, a sh being sure of yourself, sure of yourself in terms of what it is you are moving towards next or whatever it is you are taking the lead in manifesting for yourself it's going to be balanced it's going to be harmonious it's going harmonious it's going to be reciprocal and that's because you're ensuring that it's going to be that way with this queen of swords energy and then we have the other side of the equation who's here in the nine of swords so this could represent the individual that you may be walking away from i am picking up on a masculine energy on this side of the equation um, and what seems to be happening here is this person is uh, all up in arms, or at least this side of the equation is all up in arms. This could actually also be family. I am feeling that too. Um, and many of you, and this is also, you guys, this is why I really encourage you to leave your comments in the comments section down below, especially if some of these readings are resonating with you, or you kind of want to get your energy in the mix for these collective readings. Because in me reading through your comments, I'm able to connect with you. And that might seem weird, but uh, over the three, uh, this is a little bit of a tangent, a little bit of a sidebar, but bear with me. Over the three years that I've been doing this, these readings, I've been, I've been working with this channel and I've been, you know, doing tarot readings professionally. One of my strongest suits is being able to just connect with someone instantly, regardless as to whether or not we've actually met in person or spoke uh, vocally with each other. Um, oftentimes, you know, in the very beginning, people would send me emails of, uh, from, I would get emails from people that I had never met before, never even spoken to in my life, but in being able to read through their email and, and pick up on their energy through what it is they're transmitting in the email and the words that they're using and blah, 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 everything that comes from them, I'm able to connect with them. And so I've been able to successfully channel readings for them and give it out to them without even having a conversation really other than reading their email and it's still been accurate. So that's why I really do encourage you guys to, to get involved here, leave your comments, let me know how this resonates with you, um, bring up anything or, or, or list or uh, express anything that may have been brought up for you because later on in the, in the next readings moving forward, I will be able to connect with that and help give you a little bit more specific energies or specific understandings or at least fine-tune the channeling I'm getting to help you and to help the collective okay there are a lot there have been a lot of times where people have been like they've watched these collective morning coffee readings and be like whoa that was like a personal reading it happens guys okay so with that said um, I feel like this individual on this side of the equation is really having a hard time of it or is getting to a place and and okay I went off on that tangent because I just I did just feel that this has to do with family for some of you and that makes sense because many of you have listed or said this has to do with my family certain members of my family this that and the third okay so you're walking away from this or walking away from this or at least setting some stronger boundaries and this person is kind of losing their mind or is kind of like is losing it a little bit because you have the Nine of Swords here with the Ten of Cups and the Four of Cups. The Ten of Cups is in reverse. The Four of Cups is upright. Now, initially, what I'm getting from this situation is that the reason why this person is all up in arms, is going crazy in their head, is because something about some sort of community or family unit is falling apart, is in reverse. And it doesn't really seem or feel like this person wants to do anything about it or wants to change their ways or wants to adjust anything to get this Ten of Cups to be upright or to keep whomever is walking away from doing so, okay? And that's their dilemma, that's their issue, and quite frankly, it feels like whomever is in this Queen of Swords energy, that's exactly why you have gotten to this Queen of Swords energy. So there's a part of their energy here that's kind of like, well, I brought this on myself, this, that, and the third, but then part of them is like, I don't wanna change. I'm not ready to change, I'm not, I'm resistant to change is what I'm hearing. And it's causing a lot of turmoil for them. Uh, and I'm, I mean, I wanna be as compassionate as possible here. Like I get it, okay, at the same time, I understand change is hard. It's not always easy. It's not always, it's rarely ever is it comfortable, but at the same time, like you can't expect somebody to stick around <laughs> through the bullshit and and expect things to just always be okay if you're not willing to keep up your end of the bargain or if you're not willing to 
do something about it. That's what this Four of Cups is. The universe is, or, or the universe, their higher selves, whatever, is handing them, them an opportunity to make a change, to turn, to turn things around. And instead, they would rather, well, I don't know what they would, ra or would rather do. That may be, that looks like it's going to be a topic for um, clarification. Okay, we can do that. But before we get into clarification, I do want to pull one more, one more time for this, this topic, for this situation. Now, here's the other thing. At the bottom of the deck, you have the Eight of Cups. Underneath that is the Eight of Wands to the Hermit, to the Lovers. Oof, to the Queen of Pentacles. Yeah, okay, to the Nine of Pentacles. Um, the Nine of Pentacles, the Five of Swords. Okay, so, I mean, this is, this is keeping up with the message that we've been sending all along. But what this is saying here at the bottom of the deck, somebody is walking away, and the space, the air, the trajectory, their, their, the, whatever it is they're targeting is wide open. Okay, the, the, it's like the door is literally wide open open maybe in some cases like your path is so clear that maybe the door was taken off the hinges altogether you know what i mean like there's literally nothing blocking you nothing stopping you here but that mainly is coming from a sense of uh self-awareness the hermit which has led to a, a level of inner union the lovers which was also what we were talking about here with you for the four of wands which is, so this inner union has helped you cultivate a greater sense of awareness of your worth Queen of Pentacles, and thus you're standing on your own, Nine of Pentacles, and walking away from a situation that is just a lose-lose battle. And the reason why, again, is because this side of the equation, even though we have the community or the family or the household or whatever turning upside down, is no longer what it used to be. There's still a refusal or a reluctancy to actually do anything about it. And that's what's keeping you, that, and that's what's causing you to just, or whomever, to just walk away. To put down your sword and to stop fighting. The Five of Swords. The Five of Swords is often an extremely destructive energy, very much a lose-lose situation. But the Five of Swords can also represent cutting your losses or picking your battles. And it seems you're, that somebody here is really just no longer willing to fight this battle. It's not worth it. Quite frankly, it was never worth it. Okay, but what's helped you come to this realization of whether or not it's worth it at this point is this level of introspection and thus divine union within yourself that is causing you to make a decision that is within the realm of your highest good. And that serves, or, or what is within your, the realm of your highest good right now is preserving your sense of self-worth, which is causing you to stand on your own and be like, fuck this, I'm out of here and stop fighting for something that's not worth fighting for any longer, or quite frankly, never was worth fighting for. But I mean, that's only a, a definition that comes with retrospect, okay? While you were in it, while you were still learning, while you were still dealing with it, still trying with it, still focusing on it, it was worth it at the time because it felt like something could come out of it. You never know what could, what could happen. Things could turn around, this, that, and the third. At that point, it was worth it. But now it's gotten to the point where it's not worth it any longer. And you have been able to find a sense of self-worth in this situation that is allowing you to see the bigger picture and be like, whoa, I'm not doing this any longer. Okay. So then let's, uh, let's get another pull here and see what's next for this situation. Yeah, what's next for you in this situation or what could be coming on down the pipeline in terms of this. So what's next in this situation, please, Spirit? What's next in terms of this situation? Woo, a lot of the stuff again. Okay. Uh, okay, hold on a second. Hold on, because we have a number of cards that have flipped out, flipped over in the deck. I'm going to take them, but bear with me here just a few moments. And most of these cards have fallen face down. Now, the one card that has fallen face up, it's turning in reverse. It's the Three of Cups. So I, oof, okay, then we have the Three of Swords here. Um, what I was about to say, okay, it was just the Three of Swords. All right, what I was about to say is that with this Three of Cups energy turning in reverse, it kind of feels like some of these people may be turning against you. 
Uh, you might be aware of that. I did just hear that you might be you might be aware of how you know this some sort of hive mind mentality. You have the three of cups here that's turning in reverse. Some sort of hive mind mentality may be closing out, closing up on you, um, kind of shutting you out, or, it, or or there's an energy here of saying to you, maybe even energetically, they may have said this literally if you had, had spoken to them about it, but I'm getting this feeling of, well, if you're going to go that way, then we're just going to stay here and we're going to shut you out. I'm getting... It's like uh, what I'm seeing in my head is a ball of putty. This is weird, but it's a ball of putty. And you were a part of that piece of putty. And now you've been you've been slowly but surely separating from the group, group, right? And it's leaving a hole in that ball of putty. But as time goes on, as you move further and further away, very much solidified in your trajectory or your direction or what the role that you're taking up at this point, that that hole that was left in the ball of putty starts to fill in and effectively you are no you are becoming no longer of the part of that group or that energy or that dynamic any longer but i don't feel like it's really bothering you that much because from your point of view actually from both points of view um <clears throat> from your point of view it's kind of, there's heartbreak or there's destruction or there's pain here the three of swords and you don't want to be a part of that any longer they, however, are staying stuck or rooted in this Three of Swords energy. And that is their emuls that is the emulsifier for them. That is what is keeping them together. That's the glue that holds them together. It's a comfort zone energy for them. Four of Cups. It's a comfort zone. Okay. And <laughs> now what I'm getting with this Nine of Swords here is how dare you leave us like this? Ooh. In some cases, I just heard when you were supposed to be our support system, pump the brakes. Because if they were, if, if that was what this energy feels like to you, or if that's what they are representing to you, they were energetic, they were energetic vampires. You were one of the most positive aspects to this situation, to this group, and they were feeding off of that. Okay, this is exactly what we were talking about yesterday in terms of the enabling energy that was coming through that you are no longer wanting to be a part of. Instead of doing anything about to heal, to raise their vibration, to this, that, and the third, to, you know, whatever, they were just taking all that positive energy and feeding off of it and not really doing anything. This is very indicative of like the twin flame journey in terms of the feminine uh, funneling all of this energy to the masculine to help him or her get out of their situation, but they weren't really taking it and using it to get out of their situation. They were just taking it and using it to sustain, sustain themselves in that situation. So this could be twin flame for you. Okay. We have three more cards here that did fall face down. Oh my God. Look at that. And it's so crazy because as I was talking about this, this three of cups in reverse with the three of swords upright, and remember I did mention that there is a level of enabling that was involved in this situation that you that you or someone else no longer wants to be a part of. Yesterday that was described as the empress in reverse. Guess what we have right now? The empress in reverse. Everything other than the three of swords here is in reverse, okay? You have the ace of wands, you have the Empress, and you have the Five of Wands all in reverse. Oh, coupled with the Three of Cups in reverse, right? So this is definitely a collective group of people that are... Oh, okay. Well, I just heard their nurturance standards, their nurturing standards are completely out of whack. This is a group of people or a collective energy, or a collection of energy, we'll say, that would just rather coddle each other. And I don't know why specifically, but I'm getting <clears throat> there is a level of coddling certain masculine energies in this group. And it feels like those masculine energies are in the place of power. Or at least the most power. I don't know. That This is a collective reading, so take it as it resonates for you. That's just what I'm feeling, so I'm going to go with it. I'm going to look at this as from uh, from your perspective, not necessarily from their perspective any longer, because that doesn't really matter. There's nothing we can do about their perspective anyway. 
I'm going to look at it from your perspective. What you are seeing here, you are seeing the Three of Cups in reverse, the Five of Wands in reverse, the Empress in reverse, the Ace of Wands in reverse. The Ace of Wands in reverse specifically is speaking to your lack of desire. I am, I am hearing inability. Okay. I don't necessarily want to say it that way because it's not, I mean, okay, fine, fine, fine. I'm sorry. I'll say it how I feel it. Your inability to be able to provide to these ind individuals in the way that they want you to, the way that they desire. But it's not just an inability. It's a lack of desire to do it. Ace of Wands in reverse. I'm not doing that. I have no, I have no feelings towards this. I have no inspiration towards this. This does not drive me. This does not fuel my soul. This, that, no. Nope, not doing it. Empress in reverse. I'm not providing anything to this situation any longer. I am not, I'm not clarifying things for you. I am not enabling you. I'm not coddling you. I'm not doing this any longer. And I'm also not going to argue with you about it any longer. Five of wands in reverse. It's all because of this, the three of swords. For some of you, this is the pain that they're all wrapped up in that you just don't want to deal with any longer because it's not getting anybody anywhere. Also, for some of you, this Three of Swords represents the pain that is wrapped up in this group. So this doesn't necessarily just have to be, um, you know, these people are pain ridden, even though I feel like there's still a level of that. But it could just be this person, this group of people, whatever. It's been a rough situation. It's been a situation that time and time again has led you to nothing but heartbreak and pain. And, and there's too much of that wrapped up in here. And obviously this individual or these people don't want to take up any sort of opportunity to fix it or heal it, okay? So you're in a position where it's like, well, why should I do that? Why should I be the, the unconditionally giving, unconditionally loving one? I mean, I always recommend that we hold unconditional love for everything and any, everyone, but no matter how difficult that may be, but this, the Empress in reverse here is speaking to your lack of desire to provide anymore. I'm not going to sit here and be that unconditionally loving individual and just be like, oh, well, you know, I still love them and I'm sure they still love me. So like, you know, it'll get better eventually. Nah, none of that naive shit. Nope, 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 nope. Not doing that any longer, okay? At the bottom of the deck, you do have the Seven of Cups to the Queen of Cups to the Ten of Wands, to the Devil, to the Knight of Wands, to the King of Swords, to the Ace of Cups. This all has to do with loving yourself, Ace of Cups. This all has to do with clarity of mind, King of Swords, and a moving forward away from, or moving forward what really drives you, moving forward with what you're passionate about, recognizing Seven of Cups is the confusion, but the Queen of Cups is the understanding of the confusion, being able to sort, sort all of it out. And you're recognizing that this situation is just burdensome and toxic. And that as, is actually what it feels like is driving you, fueling you to move forward passionately into a new, a brand new beginning for yourself with clarity in mind in terms of how you wish to be treated, how you want to be loved, how you want to be respected, appreciated, um, uh, uh, received, whatever. Ace of Cups. This is all coming from a sense of self-love. This is why you're pulling yourself out of this, okay? Yeah, guys. All right, uh, let's get into some clarification here. Going with the after tarot, yeah? We're gonna give this three shuffles, and I definitely wanna talk about this side of the equation with the Four of Cups, the Nine of Swords, and the Ten of Cups, which is in reverse, yeah? Three shuffles, one. Two. And three. Alrighty, so let's talk about this side of the equation, yeah? You have the Four of Cups upright, the Nine of Swords upright, and the Ten of Cups reversed. Their whole, what I'm feeling from this is their whole vision of this happy situation is falling apart. There's the Nine of Swords again at the bottom of the deck, okay? Ooh, a little bit of a clarity on this, please, Spirit. Have the ace of swords here see the ace to the nine brings you to the ten 
Ace of Swords, Temperance, two other cards that have fallen face down. There's the Seven of Cups again, and then there's the Knight of Cups. At the bottom of the deck is the Six of Cups. All right, so it's the past. This is all past energy. And what's causing... Hmm. I know this is, I know we're trying to clarify this side of the equation, but this still feels like it's talking about your side or whomever is walking away and it's explaining why. Truth and clarity in the Ace of Swords has helped you break free from the illusion. Seven of Cups, the confusion, the smoke and mirrors which has then brought greater balance into your life and is helping you move forward with an open heart, the Knight of Cups. And I feel like you're definitely walking away from the past. Six of Cups. But see, in this, the after Tarot, you see those, those two kids, the boy and the girl, that normally were the young boy was handing the, the cup of flowers to the girl, but now they're running back home. And I just get like, you're running, you're not necessarily running, but you're moving away from these past experiences. Why? Six of Cups, because you've learned, Page of Swords, how deceptive and deceitful all of it is. And that has helped you get into greater alignment to rise above this, Queen of Wands, to Judgment, to the Tower, and then to the King of Swords, to see it clearly and put it to rest because you've received the harvest or the understanding that you needed to receive. And staying here is really just an expression of toxicity uh, low vibration and uh, a lack of self-worth or a lack of uh, understanding of your self-worth. And your self-worth is what's helping you move forward to begin with. Recognizing that you don't need this type of energy in your life. I actually want to clarify the Knight of Cups now. Um, what I'm feeling here is the Knight of Cups is, is somebody here moving forward with a clear conscience. A clear and open heart. And that's also what's making this Queen of Swords energy in terms of whomever is walking away here so potent because it's like almost like your karma is free or clear or like you're you're you don't you're moving forward with a light. You don't have a heavy heart here. I want to clarify this Knight of Cups. What is the Knight of Cups? Please, Spirit. Yeah. Damn, yeah, we're taking that. <laughs> okay. Overall energy here is the Five of Cups. Okay. That's fine. I mean, that's, to be honest, that's to be expected. Shit, you guys, look at this. No wonder. Yeah, you are moving forward with a clear conscience. A Knight of Cups. The Knight of Cups. Uh, 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 a light. You're, you don't have a heavy heart at all in this. Why? Ace of Wands. Ace of Cups. Okay, Ace of Cups is that self-love, unconditional love for the self, the divine love that's pouring down within you, that is influencing you, inspiring you to move forward in a new direction. You have the Six of Wands and the Lovers, you guys. No wonder you, your, your heart is light as a feather. Your karma is clear, it feels like, okay? Your heart is as light as a feather because you have, and, 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 and to be honest, I mean, obviously we don't have the Wheel of Fortune here, but this is just what I'm feeling and the cards are confirming it for me. <clears throat> you have effectively let go of this karma. The more you stayed in this situation connected to this toxic energy, the more you were uh, accepting this karma, allowing this karmic cycle to just keep flowing in your life. The moment that you chose not to, the moment that you said, I'm going to make a decision for myself that is based on my higher awareness and that is for my higher good and is coming from a place of balance and harmony within myself because I understand the truth of what's really going on here. That was when you received your victory. That was when the karma was effectively released from your situation because you actively took a choice or took the stance and said, no, I'm not doing this any longer. That's it. And, and, That's really how this can work, you guys. It doesn't necessarily have to be that you have to go through the situation in order to release the karma. In some, in some cases, you just have to recognize what's happening and realize that nothing that you can do 
can fix this because it has to do with the other people involved as well. And so at that point, you can look at the situation and say, you know what, we're not getting anywhere with this. I don't, I'm choosing not to continue to do this with you any longer. I forgive you. I release you. I'm moving forward. I'm moving on. That's literally all you have to do sometimes. Most of the time, really. Because you have to keep in mind, we have free will here. So you could be in alignment doing the right thing, or at least what you feel is right for the situation, trying to heal, trying to grow, trying to expand, trying to learn more, and other people may not be, but that's their choice. But just because the other people are making a choice, and it's the same with the twin flame journey, you guys, just because the other person or the other people are making a choice to stay in low vibrational and toxic energies does not mean you have to do the same. And does not mean you have to continue to be energetically connected to them while they go through their own process. I'm not trying to throw shade, guys. Everybody has their own process that they're going through. Everybody is in a different place in their journey. But you have the ability to choose whether you're going to tango or, or fuck with that or not. And if you choose not to, cancel, clear, delete. My karma is good. I'm not doing this any longer. Now, you do have the Five of Cups at the bottom of the deck. I'm not going to say that there isn't a little bit of sorrow involved here for you, but to be quite honest, I feel like the for you specifically, this focus is more on the Two of Cups for you, your sense of inner balance and moving forward with what you actually have at your disposal and less on what is being lost here because then underneath the Five of Cups is the Knight of Swords. This is reversed. Ah, okay. It's the Knight of Swords. So you really are fighting back because then underneath the Knight of Swords was the Seven of Wands, but the Seven of Wands was reversed right back to the Nine of Swords. So you are fighting. Okay, so there could be a good amount of sorrow for you here. All right. There's a mourning period. Your mourning period. You're releasing something. Okay, that's perfectly valid. But I don't feel like you're so caught up in that anymore. I feel like you're just more future forward focused. Because with the Knight of Swords, then to the Seven of Wands in reverse and the Nine of Swords, it's obviously the Seven of Wands is up right now. But when I saw it, it was reversed like this. And what this is saying to me is that um, there's a lack of boundaries here, but, uh, but also the individuals that you are up against are fighting tooth and nail for and, and keeping up sort of certain boundaries that are not worth fighting for because those boundaries are only preserving their sense of fear, okay? And you're fighting against that, Knight of Swords. You're not having it, okay? And yeah, because you would rather fight for and move forward towards your new beginning because of this state of awareness of who you are. Ace of Pentacles, Page of Pentacles, King of Pentacles. King of Pentacles is representing solid, stable, sturdy energies, understanding who it is you truly are rather than giving into this fear-based reality that others are, are, are influencing you or trying to get you to stay in. Is there anything else that I want? Yes, there's one last thing that I want to clarify here, you guys. It's the Three of Swords. Yeah? Let's talk about this. What is this Three of Swords energy, please, for the collective? Definitely could be home and family. Definitely could be home and family because, or just whomever it was that you were with that provided you with a sense of stability. Uh, take that lightly, <laughs> considering what we're talking about here, right? But the, one of the first cards out was the Four of Wands, okay? You have that with, yeah, okay. You, you Yeah, you guys, you have that, you have the Four of Wands with the Six of Swords and the Two of Cups, Okay, there is that. Now, we're uh, obviously, you guys, spirit has no intentions of talking about this from the other side of the other perspective. Okay, Be, and it, it, not like, not that that doesn't, isn't relevant, not that that shouldn't be handled, but from the point of view of the individual that is watching this reading right now and resonating with this message and is walking away, it's really none of your business. And I don't mean that in a derogatory or an insulting way. It's really just, there's nothing you can do about it. And that's part of the reason why you're moving on, because it's just like, why even, why should I even think about that? Why should I even focus on that? There's nothing I can do about it. Exactly. So that's why, even though we're trying to clarify these energies from the other's point of view, we're getting your energy in relation to it. Okay. Four of Wands, Six of Swords, 
two of cups. You have come to a place of balance, harmony, and union and understanding within yourself. And that is allowing you to move from rough waters to calmer waters, to move away from this heartbreak, this, this, this painful energy in the three of swords. Yes, it is a bit of a sacrifice because in terms of this, I feel like there are family members involved or there are just people that are loved ones or people that were once really close to you or once really dear to you but you're giving up the fight. It's not worth it at this point. Underneath the deck is the Page of Swords, to the Six of Cups, to the Seven of Pentacles, to the Ten of Swords, to the King of Swords, to the Tower, to Judgment. Damn. I mean, for those of you that are proficient with Tarot, then this is fairly self-explanatory, I would say. But for others, others of you that don't that don't aren't aren't quite there yet, the Page of Swords represents learning, understanding, coming to an, a cognitive understanding of the situation based on the facts, based on uh, what it is you can clearly plainly see in the situation in terms of the past. Okay, in terms of that, and then from there you are able to gain the nuggets of wisdom, the Seven of Pentacles, or whatever harvest you can gain or what is necessary for you to understand or receive from the situation, regardless as to how minuscule it might, <laughs> a minuscule in amount it might be, right? Which is then leading you to put it to rest. Ten of Swords, okay? Because you clearly see the situation for what it truly is. And thus a tower moment is happening because this structure, this belief structure, this this unit, whatever, this long-standing situation or this long-standing belief, whatever, is being brought down because you are rising above it. Judgment. Okay. I like this, you guys. I want to get closing oracle guidance now, and I'm actually going to go with the Sacred Destiny today. Yeah? Sacred Destiny Oracle. So, four shuffles to reflect that Four of Wands energy for you, yeah? One. Two. Three. And four. All right, y'all. Closing oracle guidance for today's collective tarot reading, yeah? What closing oracle guidance do you have for the collective true spirit? That's it. Right there. Okay, you have stand still. Now, what I'm hearing with this, we're, we're definitely going to read it from the book, but what I'm hearing from this is you may be in rocky waters, uh, or I just feel like I did hear rocky waters, okay? And that makes sense because you have the Six of Swords here, so we're moving from a rough situation to a much more calmer, much more serene situation. Um, but also what I'm getting with standstill here is you really need to stand in your power and hold your own. Do not let anyone sway you, okay? Very much King of Cups energy in terms of the fact that he is able to, to, to handle whatever the ocean throws at him and he's good. Like, he's not going to be knocked off his throne. Okay. All right, so let's read this. So the Sacred Landscape wants you to know with this card. It feels that some areas of your life have slowed down or even come to a standstill. Uh, if it feels, I'm sorry, let me say it again. If it feels that some areas of your life have slowed down or even come to a standstill, you are right. Something is not progressing. Even if it seems that things are flowing, look beneath the surface. Perhaps something is immovable. The first step to becoming unstuck is to acknowledge where you are. The soul loves truth. <laughs> Ace of Swords, right? In life, you can either say, there are no weeds, there are no weeds, or you can notice the weeds and begin pulling them out. Notice what isn't working in your life and then take slow, steady steps to unblock the barriers. In nature, when one is being sucked into mud, the worst thing to do is struggle. The best thing to do is slowly and carefully, one step at a time, extricate yourself. And that's what I feel like you're doing here. It might be a painful process. It might. But I feel like 
The understanding that you have moving forward from this situation outweighs any sort of pain that may be felt in getting yourself out of it. Five of Cups, okay? Like, I'm not going sit, to sit here and deny, nor should you, that this may have a, some twinges of pain. That's reasonable, okay? But also, it feels like the payoff in terms of whatever it is you'll be removing yourself from is way better, is way, way more lucrative, way more beneficial than or positive than any sort of pain you may be feeling on the way, okay? All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>